All right, so in this video, we're gonna quickly talk about solubility rules and what does it mean to be soluble or insoluble. Okay, so pretty easy. All right, solubility rules. So um, the basic idea is that some things are soluble, some things are insoluble. Okay, so all that means is that soluble means it will dissolve in water. Almost always we're talking about in water, okay? Water is what we consider the universal solvent. Things that are insoluble, not two S's, don't know how to spell, insoluble. Cannot write and talk at the same time, okay? So that means it will not dissolve in water, okay? And this makes sense, hopefully, right? There are some things that you put in water, you mix it up, it dissolves. There are some things you put in water, you mix it up, it's not going to dissolve, okay? And we just need to figure out which is which, okay? Um, if your substance is going to be soluble, you are going to see the um, little subscript of a Q next to the chemical formula. So sometimes we'll like write out net ionic equations or something that actually has um, the different chemical formulas, different compounds. So for example, we know that salt is soluble. Salt will dissolve in water. So you'd have NaCl and then in parentheses AQ because it denotes that it's aqueous. It will dissolve in water. That means it's soluble. If your substance is insoluble, meaning it will not dissolve, it's gonna have a little parentheses with an S, meaning it's still solid, okay? So silver iodide will not dissolve in water. If you put it in there, it is still a solid, okay? That tells me, shells me, that tells me it's insoluble. All right, so um, you can actually see this, like you can look at this in the lab. If you had a, a you know, a beaker of water and it was, lost my pen, something that's soluble that you're adding. So if I have my lovely little like salt shaker and I'm adding salt to it, shake, 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 shake. Okay. If I add salt into the water and then I stir it up, my lovely spoon, okay, stir, 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 I won't be able to see anything, okay, the salt will dissolve, it'll just look like regular water, right, salt water looks like regular water, it just looks like, I don't know what I'm going to say, it looks like clear water, okay, so unless your soluble compound has some kind of dye in it, like Gatorade, right, you put Gatorade into water and mix it up, um, it starts to turn red or orange or whatever powder you get. Um, that's just because there's a dye in there, so it will actually turn the water that color, okay? Unless there's a dye in it. Other than that, most things that you would do in a chem lab don't have dyes in them, so you shake, 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 and you will not be able to see the, the actual solute. It will be soluble. Versus, okay, if I had something that's insoluble, Okay, like my silver iodide or whatever. Okay, if I shake, shake, shake and add it to my water, no matter how much I mix it up, it's not going to actually dissolve. So you would actually be able to physically see like a pile of that substance at the bottom. Okay, so there are ways for you to just look and identify and observe if something is soluble or insoluble in lab. There are also some wonderful slash horrible rules to follow, okay? So, yuck, okay? There are eight rules, they're on the back of your periodic table. Um, 
They're not complex. You just have to go through one at a time. Okay, don't let it scare you. So we'll just go through really super quick. Okay, one at a time. All right. So all nitrates, which is NO3, and acetates are soluble. So it doesn't matter what a nitrate is bonded to. It could be lithium nitrate. Okay. Boom. I have a nitrate. That dude is soluble. Okay. If I had lithium acetate, it's an acetate. It's soluble. Okay. Easy. Uh, number two, all alkali metals. Okay. Alkali is the first column of your periodic table. All of your alkali metals, those are all soluble. So is ammonium. Okay. Which is NH4 plus. So it doesn't matter. I could have NH4 Cl, ammonium chloride. I have an ammonium, that dude's soluble. I could have potassium iodide. It's got a potassium, it's an alkali metal, that dude's soluble. Okay, the first two rules, my happy face is that. First two rules are really easy, okay? Number three is when we start to get into the exceptions. Okay, so rule number three, halides, which are your halogens, okay, so the column right next to your noble gases, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, okay, those dudes are all soluble unless they're bonded to silver, lead 2, or mercury 2, okay, so if I had silver chloride, I have a halogen, okay, I have a halide, chlorine, so it should be soluble. However, except it's bonded to silver. So this is insoluble. This will remain a solid in water. It will not dissolve. Okay. If I had anything else like magnesium chloride, MgCl2, that's going to be soluble because all of my halides are soluble unless it's bonded to silver, lead, or mercury too. Okay. On we go. Same thing, okay, so sulfates, SO4 with a two minus charge, those are soluble unless it's bonded to these things. So I can have magnesium sulfate, that should be soluble. If I had lead two sulfate, it's insoluble because lead two bonded to my sulfate means it's an exception to the rule. It will not dissolve. Halfway there, okay? This is this is hopefully not too bad, all right? Hydroxides, and now from here on, right, five and down is when we get the things are insoluble unless they're bonded to specific things. Okay, so a hydroxide, so an OH minus, is going to be insoluble unless it's bonded to alkali or calcium strontium barium, okay? So calcium hydroxide, so hydroxide, that should be insoluble, but it's bonded to calcium. So this is soluble. Um, if I had lithium oxide, lithium hydroxide, not lithium oxide, good lord, lithium hydroxide, hydroxides are insoluble. However, it's bonded to an alkali metal. So this is soluble. And you'll notice, right? These, these guys coincide with each other. Hydroxides are insoluble unless it's bonded to an alkali metal. Alkali metals are soluble. So rules two and five go together. They complement each other, right? They're not contradicting each other. This is good. All right. Now, number six is almost exactly like number five, if you notice, right? So sulfides are insoluble unless it's bonded to an alkali metal, calcium, strontium, or barium. Literally the same exceptions, okay? So, if I had uh, nickel two sulfide, so N I S, nickel two sulfide, that's insoluble. Okay, the sulfides are insoluble, and nickel is not an alkali metal, it's not calcium, strontium, barium. Two more. I'm gonna actually have to move up top. All right, so phosphates are insoluble unless they're bonded to. An alkali metal, so doesn't matter. We'll write it down here though, so you can 
see, so lithium phosphate. This would be soluble because lithium is an alkali metal. Phosphates are insoluble unless bonded to an alkali metal. So it's, you guys got this. All right, last one. Carbonates are insoluble unless they're bonded to an alkali metal. So if I had like magnesium carbonate, this would be insoluble because the carbonate is bonded to an alkaline metal, right? an alkaline earth metal. If I had anything else, sodium carbonate, that would be soluble because it's bonded to an alkaline metal. It's, it's really easy. You just follow the rules. You just look at the compound and go down rule by rule until you can identify soluble or not soluble. And again, soluble just means it's going to dissolve. It's going to be aqueous. Insoluble means no, it's not going to dissolve. It's going to stay a solid.